I, I received the call shortly after the first plane hit. I got there, uh, I had to be inside on the 23rd floor when the second plane hit. Upon arriving into the OEM uh, EOC, we noticed that everybody was gone. I saw coffee that was on a desk. Still, the smoke was still coming off the coffee. I saw, I saw uh, half-eaten sandwiches. And only me, Mr. Hess, was up there. Um, after I called several individuals, one individual told me that um, to leave and leave right away. Both would go on network television on 9-11 and make the claim they experienced explosions inside the building as they tried to evacuate. I'll give you a live picture down Church Street. Fire crews now walking back toward the scene. We have seen them all morning trying to walk away because what happens is every time a little piece of the building comes down, a huge black cloud comes at us, making it almost impossible to breathe or see anything in front of them. But now, at least uh, for the past couple of minutes, it has been clear from this uh, space back on chambers in that area. So now they're walking back toward the World Trade Center. And as we keep letting you hear the personal stories, the survivor stories of exactly what happened inside the World Trade Center when that first plane went in, and of course the collapses since then, we're going to bring more of those to you now. Barry Jennings, you're on the eighth floor. You work for the city housing department. Explain to me the moment of impact. Well, me and Mr. Hesch, the corporation council, were on the 23rd floor. I told them we got to get, get out of here. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hesh, I, I said, this is it, we're dead. We're, we're not gonna make it out of here. I took uh, a fire extinguisher and I bust the window out. That's when this gentleman, this gentleman here heard my cries for help. This gentleman right here, and he said, kept saying, stand by, somebody's coming to get you. They, could, they couldn't get to us for an hour because they couldn't find us. You thought that was it? I thought, I thought we're dead. I thought that was it. We have Frank Uciardo back on the phone with okay. us, Brenda, with uh, some New York City officials. Frank, go ahead. That's right. I'm standing here right now just off Broadway by City Hall with Michael Hess, who is the city's corporation counsel. Mr. Hess, you were trapped in, I believe, Seven World Trade Center. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I was. I was up in the emergency management center on the 23rd floor, and when all the power went out in the building, uh, another gentleman and I walked down to the 8th floor where there was an explosion. And we've been trapped on the eighth floor with smoke, thick smoke, all around us for about an hour and a half. But the New York Fire Department, as terrific as they are, just came and got us out. When I made it to the sixth floor, and, and, and the, there was an explosion, the explosion was beneath me. Keep in mind now, it's pitch black in there. All the lights went out. So when the explosion happened, it blew us back. I'm thinking I'm standing on, a, on, on the landing. I'm actually holding on. To a pole above us really? and I had to climb back up because Hess is yelling what do we do now I said there's only one thing we can do is and it's go back up both buildings were still standing keep in mind I told you the fire department came and ran they came twice why because building tower one fell then tower two fell and then when they came back they came back with all concern now like to get me the hell out of there I was trapped in there for several hours I was trapped in there when, when both buildings came down all this time, I'm hearing all type of explosions. All this time, I'm hearing explosions. When they finally got to us, and they took us down to what, what they, they uh, called the lobby, because I asked them, I said, when we got down there, I said, where are we? He said, this was the lobby. And I said, you got to be kidding me. It was total ruins. Total ruins. Now, keep in mind, when I came in there, the lobby had nice escalators. It was a huge lobby, and for me to see what I saw it was unbelievable. And the firefighter that took us down kept saying, do not look down. And I kept saying, why? He said, do not look down. And we were stepping over people. And you know you can feel when you're stepping over people. This building would fall into its own footprint at 5.20 in the afternoon at nearly free fall speed. Almost seven years later, there has still been no official reason given but some have given the false impression that damage caused by the collapse of the Twin Towers brought Seven down. Despite the fact that no other surrounding buildings acted in this manner.
Dr. S. Shyam Sunder would make the claim on behalf of the National Institute of Standards and Technology that on about a third of the face to the center and to the bottom, approximately 10 stories, about 25% of the depth of the building, was scooped out. Here is the south face of World Trade Center 7. Does it look like one-fourth of the building is gone? Perhaps we should take a look inside. It appears it is not scooped out after all. Members of the media were reporting that the building had collapsed due to structural damage and fire more than 20 minutes prior to it going down. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? The building can clearly be seen in the background as Jane Stanley reports its demise. Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, the feed would be cut before the building collapsed. And, and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Um, I was wondering what it felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley. Um, they called me down. I think it was part of the 9-11 Commission. They asked me the same questions that you guys are asking. me. And um, at that point, they said, okay, thank you. They really? sent me on my way. And yeah, you told them pretty much everything you just told us. Yes. You were in the building, got rocked by an explosion, yes. all that. Yes. And you know that they didn't mention Building 7 once in the commission report. I told them that's where I was. It was very, uh, to, to tell you, it was very scary because they, they, they looked like very important people. Yeah. They were questioning me about certain things. And, um, I don't know if they liked the answers I gave. I can pretty, I, I can care less. I gave what I, my account of it, the truth, and that was it. That day I'll never forget. And the, the explanations that were given to me is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. I'm just confused about one thing, and one thing only. Why World Trade Center 7 went down in the first place. I'm very confused about that. I know what I heard. I heard explosions. The, the, the um, expl explanation I got was, it was the uh, fuel oil tank. I'm an old boiler guy. If it was a fuel oil tank, it would have been one side of the building. After 9-11, a climate of fear was created in order to shut down any opposition to the Bush administration's new agenda. A week after 9-11, anthrax began appearing in the mail. The letters were made to look as though they were the work of Muslim extremists, claiming death to America and Allah is great. Now, if you remember these anthrax letters, they were written to appear to be from semi-literate Muslims, very crude handwriting, Allah this, Allah that. Uh, they really do look more like movie prop letters than real letters. The targets were government buildings, media outlets such as CBS, NBC, the New York Post, and politicians such as Senator Daschle and Leahy, two members of the opposition party. When the FBI tested the anthrax, it was highly refined and weaponized. Colin Powell would go on CNN and deny these allegations. No, I think uh, we've had a lot of stories over the past four or five days. First it was weaponized anthrax, then it was highly refined, 
And then when it was analyzed, it was discovered it was none of the above. The anthrax used in the attacks was identical to that of the AIM strain, which led the investigation to Fort Detrick. An analysis 